we are going to start now the next lecture lecture 2 of class 12th mathematics chapter 1 relations and functions in this lecture we will discuss about the definition of even odd functions and periodic functions study some of their properties and solve certain problem based on them so the first definition we have over here it is the odd functions so a function is said to be an odd function if f of minus x the function that is given to us it is fx it is called odd if f of minus x that is equal to minus f of x for all x so if we talk about the function y is equal to x or we are saying this is fx is equal to y is equal to x if we substitute f of minus x the answer we get it is equal to minus of x and that is equal to minus f of x second if we are talking about the function fx is equal to sin x what is f of minus x that is equal to sin of minus x that is equal to minus sin x that is equal to minus f of x so in these cases what we have is f of minus x is equal to minus f of x f of minus x is equal to minus f of x so both these functions y is equal to x and y is equal to sin x both these functions these are the odd functions so to test whether a function is an odd function or not we have uh, to a method using the graph of that function so this thing is mentioned over here that the graph of an odd function is symmetrical in opposite quadrants it means if we are looking at this function y is equal to x look at this quadrant over here we are talking about this is our first quadrant the opposite quadrant means we are talking about this quadrant over here this is our quadrant 3 and we are saying that the graph of this function is symmetrical in both these opposite quadrants if we are talking about the function y is equal to x cube look at this quadrant this is the first quadrant and this is the third quadrant the graph is symmetrical in both these quadrants similarly if you look at this function y is equal to sin x look at this first quadrant and third quadrant the graph is symmetrical look at this second quadrant and fourth quadrant the graph is symmetrical graph is symmetrical means look at the shape of the graph in this region it is in this way similarly the graph in the third quadrant it is in this way so this thing is explained over here that is the curve in the first quadrant is identical to the curve in the third quadrant this thing is shown over here that curve in the first quadrant it is identical to the curve in the third quadrant and the curve in the second quadrant it is identical to the curve in the fourth quadrant so this is the definition of odd function and this is how we can check graphically whether a given function is an odd function or not the next definition we have it is even function so we are saying a function it is even if f of minus x is equal to f so if we are talking about the function say fx is equal to x square so f of minus x is equal to again x square that is equal to fx if we are talking about the function fx is equal to mod x then f of minus x is equal to uh, mod of minus x and mod of minus x means we are talking about it is mod x and that is equal to again fx if we are talking about the function fx is equal to cos x then f of minus x that is equal to cos x is equal to fx so all these functions these are even functions these are satisfying the property that f of minus x is equal to fx so again if the graph of the function is given or if we are talking about the graphical method to check whether a function is even or odd we are saying the graph is always symmetrical about y axis this is our y axis and if we look at this graph over here this is the shape of graph 
along this direction then this is the shape of the graph in this direction and both these parts these are symmetrical about the y axis this is a function y is equal to x square similarly for y is equal to mod of x the graph is a symmetrical about y axis this is our y axis and the graph is symmetrical about y axis next we have listed some properties of the even and odd functions the first is the product of two odd or two even functions is an even function to remember this you can just remember it like this that if we are talking about any two numbers that are negative or any two numbers that are positive if we take the product of those two then the answer we obtain that is always positive similar is the case over here we are saying if we take two odd functions or two even functions then the answer is always an even function second we are saying the product of odd and even function is an odd function one function it is even function and second function is an odd function then their product is an odd function next is derivative of an odd function is an even function suppose i am talking about the function fx is equal to x cube f dash x is equal to 3x square so suppose this function it is equal to g of x so what is f of minus x that is equal to minus f of x what is g of minus x that is equal to 3x square is equal to gx so if the given function is an odd function then its derivative it is an even function similarly if the given function is an even function the derivative of an even function is an odd function next is a function which is even or odd when squared become an even function we are saying suppose we have a function fx is equal to sin x it is an odd function we are talking about a new function gx that is equal to sin square x then this function is square of an odd function so this function will be an even function this thing is important over here that this original function should be even or odd we are not talking about any function we are not saying like this that square of any function is an even function but we are saying if any given function is either even or odd then the square of that function is an even function next is the only function which is both even and odd it is the constant function the zero function so zero function is the only function which is both even as well as the odd function now next question we have is if f is an even function then find the real values of x satisfying the equation fx is equal to f of x plus 1 over x plus 2 now these kind of equation these are called functional equations i'll explain them with an example over here suppose we are saying the function we are considering it is f from r to r and the definition of f x we are writing it is a constant function 2 clearly this is equal to f of minus x it is constant function and it is also satisfying x plus 1 over x plus 2 that is equal to f of x plus uh, f of x that is equal to 2 so this function this satisfies this it is an even function and it is satisfying this functional equation for all x belongs to r but this is for this particular function fx is equal to uh, we are saying 2 now suppose the next function we are considering it is even function we have to consider and we are considering that fx is equal to x square now clearly this function is an even function now we are interested in those values of x for which it is satisfying this functional equation so we are saying fx is equal to x square and what is f of x plus 1 over x plus 2 it is x plus 1 over x plus 2 square on solving this you will get the value of x it is x plus 1 by x plus 2 or x is equal to minus of x plus 1 over x plus 2 you can solve these two equations 
to obtain the values of x for which this function fx is equal to x square this is e1 and it is satisfying this functional equation now suppose i am considering the function fx is equal to say cos x this is also an e1 function so this is an e1 function and we are saying that cos x should be equal to cos of x plus 1 over x plus 2 so we will obtain those values of x for which this equation is satisfied so like this we have to check it for every e1 function and it is not possible to check it for every e1 function in this way manually so if we again look at this function over here we are saying first of all it is e1 function so it means f of minus x is equal to f of x and second thing it is f of x should be equal to f of x plus 1 over x plus 2 so we are saying the function should satisfy we are interested in those points of x we want to calculate the values of x for which fx is equal to this we want to calculate those values of x for which fx is equal to uh, f of minus x is equal to x plus 1 over x plus 2 now we are saying this is possible if x is equal to x plus 1 over x plus 2 and this is possible if minus x is equal to x plus 1 over x plus 2 now if we cross multiply these two terms we will get it is x square plus x minus 1 is equal to 0 and this will give us x square plus 3x plus 1 is equal to 0 on solving this we will get the root x is equal to minus 1 plus minus root 5 by 2 on solving this we will get x is equal to minus 3 plus minus root 5 by 2 so these are the four possible values of x for which an e1 function will satisfy this functional equation now the next question we have find whether the given function is e1 or odd function and the function that is given to us is fx is equal to x into sin x plus a tan x over greatest integer of x plus pi over pi minus uh, 1 by 2 now if we look at this value over here this is greatest integer of x by pi plus 1 and this is equal to greatest integer of x by pi plus 1 so this whole denominator part this will become greatest integer of x by pi plus 1 minus 1 by 2 and on solving this we will get that fx is equal to x sin x plus tan x over greatest integer of x by pi plus 0 0.5 now if we calculate the value of f of minus x we will have it is minus x from this we are calculating this value it is sin of minus x plus tan of minus x over greatest integer of minus x by pi plus 0.5 now look at this numerator part over here sin of minus x we know it is minus of sin x tan of minus x it is minus of tan x so this whole numerator part this will become x into sin x plus tan x this minus minus and minus gets cancelled if we look at this denominator this is greatest integer of minus x by pi and this value we know from the far from the properties of greatest integer function this will be minus 1 minus x by pi plus 0 0.5 and the answer comes out to be uh, greatest minus sign is there greatest integer of x by pi minus 0 point now if we consider the value of x to be multiple of n pi we are talking about this condition over here if the value of x we consider to be multiple of n pi then the value of this sin x and tan x these will be 0 and the final answer we will obtain that will be equal to 0 and if we consider the value of x not the multiple of n pi then the answer we obtain the numerator part we have it is x times sin x plus tan x and the denominator we obtain it is 
माइनस ऑफ x ग्रेटेस्ट इंटीजर ऑफ x बाई पाई माइनस जीरो पॉइंट फाइव एंड इफ वी कंपेयर दीज टू वैल्यूज दिस वैल्यू विद दिस वैल्यू ओवर है वी विल सी दैट f ऑफ x एफ ऑफ माइनस एक्स दैट इज इक्वल टू एफ ऑफ माइनस एफ ऑफ एक्स इफ एक्स इज नॉट इक्वल टू एन पाई इट इज जीरो वेन एक्स इज एन पाई एंड इट इज इक्वल टू माइनस एफ ऑफ एक्स इफ एक्स इज नॉट इक्वल टू एन पाई नाउ वट इज गिवन टू अस इन द क्वेश्चन इट इज बींग गिवन दैट एक्स इज नॉट इक्वल टू एन पाई सो वी आर सेंग फॉर एक्स इज नॉट इक्वल टू एन पाई this function is an odd function next is find out whether the given function is even odd or neither even nor odd uh, so this function is given to us it is fx is equal to minus of x square when x is less than equal to minus 1 it is 2 plus greatest integer of x plus greatest integer of minus x when minus 1 is less than x is less than 1 And its value is minus x square when x is greater than equal to one. Now look at this part of the function. We are saying when the value of x will lie between minus one is less than x is less than zero. So what is the value of two plus greatest integer of x plus greatest integer of minus x? That will be equal to two minus one plus zero. That is equal to one. When we are considering the value of x is equal to zero, the answer we will obtain for this function, the answer we will obtain that will be equal to two. And third, we are saying when we are considering zero is less than x is less than one, the value of this function we will have it is two plus zero minus one, and the value comes out to be one. So we are saying that for this function. For x is less than equal to one, the value we have it is minus x square. For x is greater than one, it is minus x square. And when we are talking about this region, that it is value of x lies between minus one and zero, the value of function we have it is one. When the value of the function x is equal to zero, we have answer is equal to two. And when the value of x lies between zero and one, the answer we have it equal to One. Now, corresponding to this function, if we write f of minus x, f of minus x means in place of x we are writing it is minus x. So it is minus of x square when x is less than equal to minus one. It is one when minus one is less than x is less than zero. It is two when x is equal to zero, and it is minus of x square when x is greater than equal to one. So we are saying. This value it will become x square. This value will become x square, and both these functions these are equal, and we are writing f of minus x is equal to f of x. So in place of doing this, you can also uh, directly write minus x in place of x in the given function. So when we write minus x square, that will be x square. It will be minus x. This will be plus x. This will become minus of minus x square. That is equal to minus x square. And we can see that both these function these are same. So we are saying f of x is equal to uh, minus of uh, f of minus of x. It means this function is clearly an even function. The next definition we have it is the periodic function. So we are saying a function is said to be periodic function if there exists a positive real number t such that f of x plus t is equal to f of x for all x belongs to domain of f and fx is periodic with period t period t where t is the least positive value that is there should be a least positive value for which f of x plus t should be equal to fx so if we are talking about the function fx is equal to sin x we know that f of x plus t will be equal to f of x that is sin of x plus t is equal to sin of t this thing should hold for all x belongs to r 
that is domain of f so we are saying the possible values of t they are 2 pi 4 pi 6 pi and so on so we are saying that the function sin x it is periodic because it is satisfying here is a some t for which fx is equal to f of x plus t and the least positive value that we have it is 2 pi we are saying the least positive value over here it is 2 pi this is called the period of this periodic function so now if we look at the graph of the function sin x we will see that what this period means is that after every value this 2 pi of this value x we are talking about if we are talking about this is 0 over here and this is 2 pi over here look at this portion of the graph we are saying after every value 2 pi this graph the shape of this graph will be repeated after this again the graph will be of this shape before this the graph is of this shape it means the next again for 2 pi the graph will be of this shape for 2 pi the graph will be of this shape so graph periodic means that after this portion after every 2 pi the graph of the function it is c next is prove that the function fx that is equal to x minus greatest integer of x is periodic function so we are talking about let there be any number t real, positive real number t we are talking about which is greater than 0 and we are interested in these values of t for which f of x plus a t that is equal to f of x and what is the domain of this function it is all real numbers we are saying f of x plus t we are trying to calculate those positive t for which f of x plus t is equal to fx for all x belongs to r so if we substitute the values in this function we will get that x plus t minus greatest integer of x plus t should be equal to x minus greatest integer of x now this x x gets cancelled so what we are left with is that that uh, greatest integer of x plus t minus greatest integer of x this should be equal to t and this thing is only possible this thing implies us that the value of t we have it is 1 2 3 4 and so on and the smallest of all these values it is 1 so we are saying this function it is periodic with period 1 now if we look at the graph of this function we are talking about fx is equal to x minus greatest integer of x the graph of this function is of this shape this is the graph of this function so how we are getting this graph is suppose we are talking about this function in the region 0 is less than x is less than equal to 1 or we are saying 0 is less than equal to x is less than equal to 1 so what is the value of this function at 0 so we have f of 0 is equal to 0 what is the value of this function at 1 the value of this function will be 0 when we are talking about the values between 0 and 1 the value of this function that will be equal to the fractional part of x and when the value of x is lying between 0 is less than x is less than 1 this is equal to x we are saying between this region the fractional part will be basically equal to x because it is already the fraction we are talking about so this is the graph of the function we are saying it is fx is equal to x and this is the graph of the function between the region 0 is less than x is less than 1 when the value of x is equal to 0 it is 0 when the value of x is equal to 1 it is 1 now we know that this function is periodic with period 1 it means this is the graph of this region in this region then at 1 again the same graph will be there then again after moving one unit on x axis the graph will be same similarly on the left hand side and we obtain that the graph of this function is of this shape or this form next is let fx be periodic and k be a positive real number such that f of x plus k 
plus fx is equal to 0 for all x belongs to R. We have to prove that fx is a periodic with period to k. Now what is given to us is that fx is a periodic function and it is satisfying this condition that f of x plus k plus f of x is equal to 0. So this implies us that f of x plus k that is equal to minus f of x. Now if we put x plus k is equal to x in this equation, what we will get is, so this thing implies us that f of x plus 2k in place of x, we have substituted this value in place of x, we have substituted x plus k, so this becomes x plus 2k and this is equal to minus f of x plus k and this value is equal to minus f of minus fx. We are talking about what is f of x plus k that is equal to minus fx. We have substituted this value over here. So the answer we are obtaining in this case, this thing implies us that f of x plus 2k that is equal to f of x. So this gives us that the period of this function it is 2k and this is what we have to prove. Next are some standard results on periodic functions. So these are some periodic functions that are given to us and we are we have written their periods. So first is if the functions they are of the form sine raised to the power nx, cos raised to the power nx, secant raised to the power nx or cosecant raised to the power nx we are talking about. Then for sine raised to power nx and cos raised to power nx, if n is even, we are talking about all these four functions, we are saying if n is even, their period is pi. n is even means we are talking about either it is sine square x or it is cosecant 4x for all these, the period is pi. And if n is odd or a fraction, if we are talking about suppose the function cos 3x or it is cos 1 by 3x, then their period it is 2 pi. Next, when we are talking about tan raised to the power nx and cot raised to the power nx, their period is pi when n is even or odd, whatever the value of n is, their answer is always equal to, their period is always equal to pi. Next is when we are talking about the mod of sin x, mod of all these trigonometric functions, then their period it is pi. The period of the function x minus greatest integer of x we have already seen it is equal to 1. Then we are talking about algebraic functions. Suppose we are considering the function fx is equal to x. We want to find the value of t greater than 0 which is a real number such that f of x plus t should be equal to fx. Now if we solve this we will get x plus t. We are considering fx is equal to x. That is equal to x. This implies t is equal to 0. But the condition that we have is that t should be greater than 0. It means the solution set, we are talking about x such that this, this set is equal to 5. So we are saying period does not exist. So these functions, you can check these thing for any function over here. So we are saying for all these functions we have that these functions, these are not periodic. Next we are talking about the constant function. Suppose we are talking about the function fx is equal to 2. Now what we see is if we consider f of x plus t, the answer is again 2. So what we get is that fx is equal to f of x plus t. It means this function is periodic. We are saying t is greater than 0. But if we talk about the period of this function, we cannot find the minimum value of t. We are saying t is greater than 0. But there is no minimum value of I am again explaining this thing. We are saying fx is equal to f of x plus t for all t greater than 0. But there is no minimum positive real number. So we are saying as 
there does not exist any minimum positive real number. So we are saying this function is periodic with no fundamental period, but there is no defined period for this particular function. Next is find the periods of cos of square root x. So we want to find that value of t for which this is the function fx given to us. The function f of x plus t will be equal to cos of square root of x plus t. We want to find those values of t for which cos of square root of x plus equal to cos of square root of x plus t. But there is no value of t. But there is no value of t in this set we are talking about. We are considering we have to find t such that this t is greater than 0 and t is a real number. And we are saying that this set this is an empty set. So this, there is no value of t for which f of x plus t is equal to f of x. But if we are talking about the function square root of cos x, then we are saying f of x is equal to square root of cos x, f of x plus t that is equal to square root of cos of x plus t. Now if we equate both these values we get it is square root of cos of x plus t should be equal to square root of cos x and this thing holds for all t equal to 2 pi, 4 pi and so on and minimum the least value of all these it is 2 pi this is the least value so the period of this function it is 2 pi next we have is properties of periodic function so first is if fx is periodic with period t fx is any function given to us and it is periodic with period t then we have first property we have that if we multiply this function with any constant c this constant c is any real number which is not equal to 0 then we are saying the period of this function is again t if we are adding if we are talking about the function f of x plus c even then the period of this new function will remain t if we are writing f of x plus minus c in this case also the period will be equal to so suppose I am talking about the function say fx is equal to sin x. So the period of this function we know it is 2 pi. So what this says is that if we have the function say gx is equal to 2 sin x. If we have the function hx is equal to sin of x plus 3 or we have the function say uh, f x is equal to sine of x plus 3. In all these cases, the period of this function will remain 2 pi. <coughs> now, the next result we have is, if we have the function fx and its period is t, then the period of the function k times f of cx plus d, we are saying, we have the function fx, its period is t. If we have the function k of fx, its period is t. If we have the function k of fx plus d, its period is t. But if we have the function k times f of cx plus d, it is c over here, then the period will become t over mod of it means if the function sin x has a period 2 pi, then the function fx is equal to sin 2x. It will have the period t is equal to 2 pi over 2. We are talking about this value 2 is there. So we are dividing the period with the value 2 and the answer we obtain that is equal to pi. So the period of the function sin 2x will be equal to so these results you should always remember because these will be useful and you will be solving the problem based upon the periods.
problems related to periods next result we have is if now the next result we have is if f1 and f2 are periodic functions with period t1 and t2 respectively then hx is equal to f1x plus f2x we are talking now about the sum of two functions then their period will be lcm of t1 comma t2 t1 t2 these are the periods of these functions and the condition we have is that hx is not an even function not an even function means that f of x is not equal to f of minus x and second thing we are talking over here it is that it will be equal to half the lcm of these two values if we have f1x and f2x are complementary pairwise comparable functions so what this thing means is we are talking about this condition over here complementary pairwise comparable function what this thing means is it is complementary pair means we are talking about we are writing in place of x i am talking about this value it is sin x over here and we are writing another function it is cos x we are saying if we replace this x with the value pi by 2 minus x then we have this condition that it is sin x is equal to cos of pi by 2 minus x such a functions these are called complementary functions and these are comparable also that we can compare these two functions so these kind of functions are there then we have f1 x plus f2 x it has the period 1 by 2 lcm of t1 comma t2 the next thing we have is when we are taking the LCM of two numbers, suppose we are talking about the number 2 and 3. We know the LCM of both these numbers it is 6. That is the least common multiple. Least common multiple means we write the multiples of 2. It is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, so on. We write the multiples of 3. The multiples of 3 are 3, 6, 9, 12 and so on. What are the common multiples over here? They are 6, then 12, then 18 and so on. And the least of all these multiples it is 6. So we are saying the least common multiple of 2 and 3 it is 6. Now suppose we have the numbers. It is we have to calculate the LCM of say 1 by 2 and 3 by 5. So to calculate the LCM of these numbers, the formula we have is, we have to write the formula we are using over here. It is equal to LCM of the numerators. It is equal to LCM of 1 and 3 and HCF of the denominator. That is HCF of 2 and 5. So the answer we obtain it is equal to 3 upon the HCF part we have it is 2 and 5. So what is HCF of 2 and 5? It is 1. So we are saying the LCM of both these numbers it is equal to 3. So you must remember these formulas. It is important to note over here that whatever you have studied till now, you have studied the LCMs and HCF for the natural numbers. These are the definitions we are talking when we have the numbers in the form of fractions. Next we have, we are talking about the LCM of 2 pi by 3 and pi by 6. Say I am talking about these two numbers. So the answer we will have it is LCM of numerator it is 2 pi comma pi. And the HCF of denominator it is 3 and 6. So LCM of 2 pi and pi it is 2 pi and HCF of these two numbers it is 3. So the answer we are obtaining it is 2 pi by 3. Next we have mentioned over here that LCM of rational number with the rational number is possible. Now the next result we have is if F1 and F2 are periodic functions with period T1 and T2 respectively then hx is equal to f1x plus f2x we are talking now about the sum of two functions then their period will be 
LCM of T1, T2. T1, T2, these are the periods of these functions. And the condition we have is that HX is not an even function. Not an even function means that f of x is not equal to f of minus x. And second thing we are talking over here it is that it will be equal to half the LCM of these two values if we have f of one x and f two x are complementary pairwise comparable functions. So what this thing means is we are talking about this condition over here complementary pairwise comparable function what this thing means is it is complementary pair means we are talking about we are writing in place of x i am talking about this value it is sin x over here and we are writing another function it is cos x we are saying if we replace this x with the value pi by 2 minus x then we have this condition that it is sin x is equal to cos of pi by 2 minus x. Such a functions, these are called complementary functions and these are comparable also that we can compare these two functions. So these kind of functions are there. Then we have f1 x plus f2 x. It has the period 1 by 2 LCM of t1 comma t2. The next thing we have is when we are taking the LCM of two numbers, suppose we are talking about the number 2 and 3. We know the LCM of both these numbers it is 6. That is the least common multiple. Least common multiple means we write the multiples of 2. It is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, so on. We write the multiples of 3. The multiples of 3 are 3, 6, 9, 12 and so on. What are the common multiples over here? They are 6, then 12, then 18 and so on. And the least of all these multiples it is 6. So we are saying the least common multiple of 2 and 3 it is 6. Now suppose we have the numbers. It is we have to calculate the LCM of say 1 by 2 and 3 by 5. So to calculate the LCM of these numbers, the formula we have is, you have to write the formula we are using over here, it is equal to LCM of the numerators, it is equal to LCM of 1 and 3 and HCF of the denominator that is HCF of 2 and 5. So the answer we obtain it is equal to 3 upon the HCF part we have it is 2 and 5. So what is HCF of 2 and 5 it is 1. So we are saying the LCM of both these number it is equal to 3. So you must remember these formulas. It is important to note over here that whatever you have studied till now, you have studied the LCMs and HCF for the natural numbers. These are the definitions we are talking when we have the numbers in the form of fractions. Next we have, we are talking about the LCM of 2 pi by 3 and pi by 6. Say I am talking about these two numbers. So the answer we will have it is LCM of numerator it is 2 pi comma pi and the HCF of denominator it is 3 and 6. So LCM of 2 pi and pi it is 2 pi and HCF of these two numbers it is 3. So the answer we are obtaining it is 2 pi by 3. Next we have mentioned over here that LCM of rational number with a rational number is possible. And the formula we have already seen that if we have two rational numbers then by using this formula we can find the LCM. But if we have two irrational numbers, then it is possible to find the LCM, but they should be like numbers. Like numbers means if we are talking about these numbers, we are talking about it is 2 pi by 3, pi by 6, and pi by 12. So it is pi there in all these numbers, so it is possible to find the LCM. But if we are talking about say the number pi and e, so it is not possible to find the LCM of these two numbers. 
for the irrational numbers, the numbers should be the like numbers, but it is possible to find the LCM if two numbers are irrational. Now, the next case we have is if we have one irrational number and one rational number. Suppose I am talking about the LCM of say 2 and pi. So, it is not possible to find the LCM of 2 and pi. You are saying the LCM of rational and irrational is not possible. These are few facts that you should always keep in mind while solving these questions. Now next, if suppose we have to calculate the uh, period of this function, fx is equal to sin x plus cos x square. So what we have is the period of the function sin square x, we know it is the value of n we have that is equal to 2, that is e1. So the period of this function it is i. The period of the function cos square x, n is equal to 2, it is e1. So it is pi. So the period of the function, now look at these two functions, sin x and cos x. If we look at these two functions, we have sin x is equal to cos of pi by 2 minus x. So which condition it is satisfying? It is satisfying that f1 and f2 are complementary pairwise comparable functions. Then we know that the, L, the period of this function should be 1 by 2 LCM of pi and pi, so the answer which is pi by 2, but this answer is not correct. Why? Because you know that sin square x plus cos square x, this is equal to 1. It means this sin square x plus cos square x, it reduces to a constant and we know that for a constant function, the period is undetermined. This thing we have already seen in the definition of the period that for the constant function, the period is undetermined. So, what we are saying over here is that LCM rule is not applicable if the function reduces to a constant. This is also the part of this formula. We are saying if f1 and f2, these are two functions and we are talking about f1 plus f2. If f1 plus f2 reduces to a constant, then we are saying that the period of that function is undetermined. Next is find the period of the function. The next question we have, it is fx is equal to sin x plus directional part of x. We know that this function sin x, it has the period 2 pi. This function fractional part of x, it has the period 1. So, it is sum of these two functions and the period we should have over here, it should be LCM of 2 pi and 1. This is an irrational number. This is a rational number. So, we are saying this does not exist and if this does not exist then we are saying that the fx is not period because lcm of these two numbers it, it does not exist so we are saying that fx is not period next we have is fx is equal to tan of 3x plus sine of x by 3 we have to find the period of this function for the function tan x the period we have it is pi, the value of n we have it is 1 and from the table it is clear that its period is pi. We know that the value of the, the period of the function tan 3x, we have multiplied this x with 3 so the period will become x by 3. The formula we have seen over here, over there that if f of cx is there then the period of x if it is t then the period of this thing will be mod, divided by mod of c. So, it means the period of tan 3x is equal to pi by 3. The period of sin x by 3, the period of sin x that is equal to 2 pi. So, period of sin x by 3 that will be equal to 2 pi upon 1 by 3. So, that will be equal to 6 pi. Now, we have these two numbers. So, we have the period of fx is equal to tan 3x plus sin x by 3 that will be equal to, we are talking about the period of this function, that will be equal to LCM of 2 pi and 6 pi. Now, what kind of number these are? It is 2 pi by 1 and 6 pi by 1 and we know that the LCM of these two numbers 
it is given by the formula that it is LCM of 2 pi and 6 pi divided by HCF of 1 and 1. So the answer we obtain that is equal to 6 pi over 1 that is equal to 6 pi. So we are saying that the period of the function fx that is equal to 6 pi. Next is find the period of fx is equal to mod of sin x plus mod of cos x. From the table we have already seen that the period of the function mod of sin x and mod of cos x it is pi. Period of both these functions individually it is pi. We are adding these two functions and further we have is that this function f of x we are talking about it is mod of sin x plus mod of cos x if we write the value of f of minus x we have it is mod of sin x plus mod of cos x and that is equal to f of x it means this function is an p1 function second thing we are talking about this is our function f1 this is our function f2 and what we have is that mod of sin x that is equal to uh, mod of cos of pi by 2 minus x it means both these function these are complementary uh, functions complementary pairwise comparable functions so it means that the answer in this case it is not lcm of pi and pi the period in this case that will be 1 by 2 times lcm of pi and pi so the answer we obtain that is equal to pi pi Next is find the period of it is sin x plus tan x by 2 plus sin x by 2 square plus tan x by 2 cube so on up to these terms are given to us. Now if we look at these terms we have the period of next we have is find the period of sin x plus tan x by 2 plus sin x by 2 square plus tan x by 2 cube so on up to this term. So now if we look at these terms, we are talking about the periods of this term. So it is sin x, the period of sin x we have it is 2 pi and the period of tan x we have it is pi. So the period of tan x by 2 is also 2 pi. So we are saying the period of both these terms it is 2 pi because when we are talking about the period of sin x plus tan x by 2, the period of this term will be LCM of 2 pi comma 2 pi and the answer comes out to be 2 pi. The next two terms we have it is sin x by 2 square plus tan x by 2 cube. So the period of this function will be 2 raised to the power 2 into 2 pi. And the period of this function will be 2 raised to the power 3 into pi. So, in both the cases, the answer we have it is 2 raised to the power 3 pi, 2 raised to the power 3 pi. So, the period of sum of both these functions that is 2 raised to the power 3 pi. The next terms that we will have, they will be sin x by 2 raised to the power 4 plus tan x by 2 raised to the power so the period of this function that will be 2 raised to the power 5 pi plus period of this function will be 2 raised to the power 5 pi. So the next period we will have it is 2 raised to the power 5 pi. Similarly for this particular part for some of these two terms we will have the period is equal to that is 2 raised to the power n pi. Now we have all these terms this term first term we are considering this is our second term this is our last term so the period of the sum of all these terms that will be the lcm of all these values that is 2 pi to the power 3 pi to the power 5 pi and 2 to the power n pi all these terms these are irrational and the value of pi that is common in between all these so they are like irrational numbers we have so we are saying the lcm of these numbers will be 2 raised to the power n pi so the period of this function will be 2 raised to the power n pi. Next we have the function fx is equal to sin raised to the power 4x plus cos raised to the power 4x. Now clearly we know that sin raised to the power nx or cos raised to the power nx 
इट हैज पीरियड पाई वेन एन इज इवन इट मीन्स पीरियड ऑफ बोथ दिस फंक्शन इट इज पाई द पीरियड ऑफ दिस फंक्शन इट इज पाई नाउ साइन रेस्टिव पार फोर एक्स इज इक्वल टू कॉस रेस्टिव पार फोर पाई बाय टू माइनस एक्स यूर हैविंग दिस कंडीशन ओवर है इट मीन्स दीज फंक् दीज टू फंक्शन दीज आर कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री पेयर वाइज कंपेरेबल फंक्शन सो द आंसर वी हैव द पीरियड ऑफ दिस फंक्शन दैट विल बी वन बाय टू टाइम्स एल सी एम ऑफ पाई कॉमा पाई सो दैट विल बी इक्वल टू पाई बाय टू सो दिस इज द पीरियड ऑफ दिस फंक्शन साइन रेस टू दी पावर फोर एक्स प्लस कॉस रेस टू दी पावर फोर एक्स नेक्स्ट वी हैज फाइंड द पीरियड ऑफ एफ एक्स इज इक्वल टू कॉस ऑफ कॉस एक्स एंड कॉस ऑफ साइन एक्स नाउ इफ यू लुक एट दिस फंक्शन कॉस ऑफ कॉस एक्स Suppose we are saying this is the function g x. Then what we have is that g of x plus pi that will be equal to cos of cos of x plus pi. This is equal to cos of this value we have it is minus cos of x, and this is equal to cos of cos of x that is equal to g of x. Now this function we are saying basically this function. g of minus x if we calculate it is cos of cos of minus x and that will be equal to cos of cos of x that is equal to gx so this gx is even similarly we are writing the function hx is equal to cos of sin x then we are saying h of minus x that will be equal to hx both these functions hx and gx these are even functions So these functions, these are even functions. So we are saying their period we have. We have verified it over here. The period we have for these two functions it is pi. The second thing we have is if you look at both these functions, you can write them in the form cos of cos of x that is equal to cos of sine of pi by two minus x. It means both these functions they are. complementary pairwise comparable functions so what we get is that their period will be 1 by 2 times lcm of pi and pi and the answer we obtain that is equal to pi by 2 next we have is find the period of function fx is equal to cos inverse of cos x so this function fx is given to be this value now we are writing f of x plus Is equal to f of x. We want to calculate those values of t. So t is greater than zero is a real number. So it means we are solving the equation that cos inverse of cos of x plus t that should be equal to cos inverse of cos of x. And this thing will hold for all the values of t is equal to two pi, four pi, six pi. And so on, and the least possible value over here it is two pi. So we are saying that the period of this function it is two pi. Next is find the period of f x is equal to cos of mod of sin x minus mod of cos x. Again, this cos x we have it is a even function. We are talking about we have a function. cos theta and we are writing say theta is equal to mod of sin x minus mod of cos x we are talking about this cos theta over here and this cos theta we know it is an even function we have already seen that this function mod of sin x minus mod of cos x this function will have period pi this will have period pi so both these function these are complementary to each other so the period of this function it is uh, the period of this function it is 2 pi the period of this function it is 2 pi so it is 1 by 2 times 2 pi so answer is that it is pi so we are saying the period of this function mod of sin x minus cos x it is pi the period of this function cos theta it is pi 
so we have the period of the function cos of mod of sin x minus mod of cos x its period will be pi by 2 that is half the period of gx if fx is a even in f o g this is our result that you have to remember that the period is half the period of gx if fx is even in f o g this is f of g of this function so this similar case similar result we can apply to find the period of the function cos of cos x we are saying over here this function cos x it has the period 2 pi this cos theta is an e1 function with period 2 pi so the period of the composition of function f o g we have that is cos of cos of x that is half the period of g x that is equal to 2 pi over 2 that is equal to pi and this thing result this result we have already seen in our previous slide next is find the period of the function the function given to us is fx is equal to sine of sine of pi x plus e raised to the power fractional part of 3x now this function sine of pi x the period of this function will be the period of sine x it is 2 pi divided by this so the period of this function it is 2 now we look at the function sine of sine of pi x it will have period 2 because sine theta it is an odd function now the period of the function the greatest integer of x the period of this function it is 1 so the period of the function 3x greatest integer of 3x that will be equal to 1 by 3 now e raised to the power 3x we are talking about it is not an even function the period of this function will be 1 by 3 now we have the period of this portion over here the period of this portion it is 2 the period of e raised to the power fractional part of 3x it is 1 by 3 so period of sum of these two will be lcm of 2 by 1 and 1 by 3 that is equal to the lcm of 2 and 1 over hcf of 1 and 3 so the answer we obtain that is equal to 2 by 1 that is equal to 2 so this is the period of this function fx next is let fx is equal to sin x plus cos of square root of 4 minus a square into x period of sin x we have it is 2 pi and the period of this function period of cos x we have it is 2 pi and the period of cos of square root of 4 minus a square into x that will be 2 pi over square root of 4 minus a square and the period of this function fx the period of this function fx will be lcm of 2 pi comma 2 pi over square root of 4 minus a square and the lcm of these two numbers will be possible only if this number this number is irrational for this number to be irra uh, this number sh should be irrational and this denominator part particularly we are saying this should be irrational this denominator part should be rational only then the, the lcm of these two numbers these two will be the like numbers like irrational numbers and their lcm will be possible only if this denominator we have it is irrational now what we have to do in this question is we have to find the integral values of a for which fx is periodic it means that this square root of 4 minus a square should be a rational number and this is we are talking about this number square root of 4 minus a square should be a rational number and this is possible only when this 4 minus a square is a perfect scale. So we can find these values of a by using the heat and trial method. So 
suppose we are substituting the value of a is equal to 0 we get the value over here it is k root of 4 and or we are talking about this value 4 minus a square we get the value of this number it is 4 which is a perfect square next if we substitute a is equal to 1 we are getting the value over here it is 4 minus 1 that is equal to 3 this is not a perfect square next we are substituting a is equal to 2 so for a is equal to 2 or we are saying it is plus minus 2 the answer we have over here it is 0 and it is also a perfect square if we substitute a is equal to plus minus 3 then this value will become negative and we are not talking we are not interested in such value so in this particular case we have the values a is equal to 0 and a is equal to plus minus 2 so we are saying the values of a for which uh, this denominator will be a rational number it is minus 2 0 and 2 so these are the integral values of a for which fx is a periodic function we are interested in integral value that is why we have substituted these values over here so by hit and trial method you can find these values of